Hello, and welcome to my presentation on our paper, Dynamically Reconfiguring Software Microbenchmarks, Reducing Execution Time Without Sacrificing Result Quality. This paper has been accepted at ESEC FSE 2020 as a full research paper. Before I dive into the contents of the paper, I want to motivate why software performance matters. Research on software performance problems, software performance bugs, has shown that uh, compared to their functional counterparts, they go longer undiscovered. And once they are found, they are harder to debug, harder to reproduce, and take longer to fix. And if you think about libraries and frameworks, where, especially in the open source world, where uh, multiple clients use one particular library or framework and rely on it, if we introduce a performance problem into that library or framework, it can have a drastic impact in terms of performance on its clients. And finally, industry in the form of Amazon and Google uh, has reported that an increase in latency in their services can result in a drastic drop in revenue. For libraries and framework in particular, one potential solution are software microbenchmarks. Software microbenchmarks are a form of performance tests that are quite equivalent or similar to what unit tests are for functional validity. They are on a granularity level of statements and method. They're similarly defined in source code uh, with special annotations. An implementation of a benchmark is as easy as uh, writing a function or a method that, um, that invokes the parts of the software that we want to benchmark. And in JMH, which is the de facto uh, standard for benchmarking in Java, the execution configuration is uh, the second part that is very important in, in writing benchmarks. The execution configuration defines of how often we repeat uh, the executions, on which levels, and this uh, influences how long the benchmarks run and how stable the results are. First, we run the warm-up phase, which is a number of uh, warm-up iterations of a certain duration, usually a second, where the performance measurements that, uh, that are captured during that phase are discarded. The warm-up phase, uh, warm phase's purpose is to uh, warm up the system. That means bringing it into a steady state to have then reliable measurements. After the warm-up phase, uh, JMH runs the measurement phase, which is a number of measurement iterations similarly of a certain duration. But this time, the resulting performance counters, which are often uh, the execution time, uh, are captured for later analysis. Because Java uh, runs in the Java virtual machine and performance measurements taken in different virtual machines can have quite a variability amongst them. And to capture this run-to-run -run variance, uh, JMH has this notion of a fork, which is a sequential execution of the same warm-up measurement uh, iterations in different uh, JDM instances. The result of a benchmark is then a distribution of the values coming from each measurement iteration. And depending on the spread of this distribution, we, we define a benchmark as stable or unstable. There are a number of challenges with uh, running microbenchmarks. Um, and I want to point out two challenges in particular that we also tackle in this paper. First, benchmarks, uh, benchmark suites run for a very long time, so up to multiple hours or even days, as reported by previous research. We even ran a pre-study as part of our paper where we looked at open source GitHub projects that have JMH benchmark suites, and we found that 110 of these projects in our corpus, which is 15% of the projects that we looked at, have run times of three hours or longer. And the other challenge uh, that, are, uh, that are related to microbenchmarking and performance measurements in general is that there is this problem of high performance variability. This high performance variability can depend on the execution environment that we run the measurements in, or it can be due to other forms of measurement bias as reported by previous work. We also reported in a previous paper that in microbenchmark suites, uh, there are many unstable benchmarks and there are different levels of stability. So ultimately, configuring 
micro benchmarks is a trade off between runtime and stability. We made the following observations that led to the idea of our paper. The first one is that different Java virtual machines, different forks, might be stable at different points in time, meaning at a different number of warm up iterations. And depending on this point and where a fork is stable, we might uh, run warm up iterations that are not necessary to reach the stable state. The other observation is that when all the measurements are already stable uh, with respect to a certain criteria, we might run in the current version of uh, JMH too many forks that do not add to the stability of the results. So we waste time there as well. And finally, a manual configuration uh, of benchmarks is required for every benchmark because different benchmarks might be differently stable or unstable. And it also depends on where we execute these benchmarks and that different configuration might be important for different environments. So the idea is to have uh, a dynamic data-driven way to decide when uh, benchmarks are in a steady state and the measurement is stable, and therefore when we stop micro-benchmark executions. The approach of uh, how JMH currently works, which is the static configuration, looks like that. We have a predefined, that means before we start executing the benchmarks, we have a predefined number of warm-up iterations, measurement iterations and forks, and the configurations stay uh, stable during the execution. So our idea is to dynamically reconfigure this, uh, this static configuration, basically. For this, we run uh, a set of minimum number of iterations, and then we arrive at the stoppage point where we decide whether the fork is already in a steady state, so whether the measurements are already stable or still unstable. We do this by looking at a sliding window of the last X uh, warm-up iterations in our example here, five. We take the measurements from these last five uh, warm-up iterations and depending on one of the three stoppage criteria that we implemented for dynamic reconfiguration, we decide whether, uh, whether it's stable or not. The stoppage criteria that we looked at is based also on previous research, the coefficient of variation or the relative confidence interval with both below a certain threshold. And the third stoppage criteria that we looked at is the Kullback library divergence, uh, which gives us a probability of more warm up iterations will lead to different uh, result distributions. This uh, stoppage criteria is based on Hey et al's paper from last year's FSE. If the measurements are unstable at that point, we run another warm-up iteration. We, uh, we arrive at another stoppage point, the sliding window shifts to the right, uh, and we decide again, okay, the, the JVM is not in a steady state yet. So we need to run another warm-up iteration, arrive at another stoppage point with a new sliding window, and finally, our stoppage criteria tells us uh, that we are in a steady state. Our approach then runs a fixed number of measurement iterations. The reason why we don't run just one measurement iteration is that even if we decide that we are in a steady state, different uh, performance iterations, measurement iterations will not yield the exact same result. And in order to have robust uh, res results, we run multiple iterations. But because we could uh, stop the warm up phase um, earlier compared to the static configuration, we can skip a few iterations. We then repeat this dynamic procedure for a minimum number of forks to capture run to run variance. And we, at, after this minimum number of forks, we arrive at a stoppage point where we look at the measurement iterations of all previously run forks to decide whether, um, whether the overall measurement is stable or not. And we do this again uh, based on our stoppage criteria. For the sake of the example, um, let's say we are still unstable. So we run one fork after the other until we arrive at a stoppage point where our stoppage criteria says that it's stable, the overall measurement is stable, and this is then the end of the execution. So with this dynamic reconfiguration approach, we can not only save uh, iterations because uh, we dynamically decide when 
uh, fork is in a stable state, but we can also skip full forks uh, if the overall measurement is already stable. To evaluate our approach, we looked at how JMH works today, the static configuration, and compared it to dynamic reconfiguration with one of the uh, stoppage criteria each. And for this, we formulated the following two research questions. First, how does dynamic reconfiguration of software microbenchmarks affects, affect the res execution result? This research question is basically about, uh, does dynamic reconfiguration change the stability of the results? And the second research question is, how much time can be saved by dynamically reconfiguring software microbenchmarks? This research question uh, investigates uh, the time savings of using dynamic reconfiguration over static configuration. We use the following methodology for our evaluation. We first select a, a set of 10 open source Java projects as study objects that have JMH benchmark suites from 31 bench individual benchmarks to over 1,300 individual benchmarks. And the suites in our study objects have a runtime between four hours and 120, uh, 192 hours. So we can clearly see that based on this run times, uh, there is some sort of need to to reduce the runtime and, and keeping a good uh, amount of uh, result quality. In our methodology, we then execute all these benchmarks of these uh, 10 open source projects in a controlled bare metal environment. We choose a bare metal environment to reduce confounding factors uh, induced by the, by the execution environment that would affect uh, our measurements and therefore the, the validity of the results. We then sample from this execution data. On the one hand side, the static configuration with JMH defaults configuration. That is the baseline of our, of our evaluation. And then we sample um, three dynamic reconfiguration approaches, one for each stoppage criteria. And we compare the static configuration to each of these three dynamic reconfiguration approaches and assess the stability and the runtime savings. Let's dive into the results for research question one. In order to, to assess the stability, we performed two analyses. So first we ran AA tests. That means basically that we looked at, for every benchmark, we looked at the result distribution of the static configuration and compared it to the result distribution of the dynamic reconfiguration, depending on one of the uh, stoppage criteria. And to compare these two, we, we looked at something that is similar to hypothesis testing, but we used bootstrap confidence intervals of the ratio of the means. And with this comparison, we can then uh, decide whether uh, the two distributions are equal and, diff and different and, and consequently um, assess whether dynamic reconfiguration changes the result distribution of benchmarks. And the second analysis that we did is maybe a bit more intuitive. That's the mean change rate. We again look at the distribution of every benchmark for the static configuration and for the dynamic reconfiguration with one of the stoppage criteria, look at the mean values of those two distributions and, and look at the, at the difference in percent that these mean values uh, are apart from each other. The results depend on which stoppage criteria we, we are using. In terms of equality, so AA tests, um, the coefficient of variation is, is the weakest uh, stoppage criteria, where, but we're already 78.8% uh, of the benchmarks have the same uh, uh, result distribution. The kohlberg liver divergence is a bit better and the best performing stoppage criteria is the relative confidence interval width with 87.6% of the benchmarks having equal distributions. In terms of mean change rate, we see a similar picture. The coefficient of variation has the highest mean change rate across all benchmarks, which is 3.1%. And the relative confidence interval with, is again, uh, the best uh, stoppage criteria with, uh, with a mean change rate across all benchmarks of 1.4%. And if we look at these numbers and look at what uh, previous research has reported, this 3% uh, of, of change in, 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 in a measurement, in a performance measurement, is often within the measurement noise. So actually, this is very, very small. So yes, dynamic reconfiguration hardly changes the result stability and is effective in that sense. <laughs> 
Let's look at research question two. We follow the following methodology for research question two. We first execute all the four approaches. So one is the static configuration, how JMH works today. And the other three are dynamic reconfiguration with one of the stoppage criteria each. And we execute these approaches uh, for one of our study subjects. We can then, with this information, we can calculate the, the runtime overhead per benchmark between one of the dynamic reconfiguration approaches and the static configuration. Based on this runtime overhead, plus the information that we have about the suite runtimes and how many warm-up iterations and forks need to be run depending on the stoppage criteria with, with dynamic reconfiguration, we can estimate the time savings across all our study subjects. The results are again, uh, depend on which stoppage criteria we use. The runtime overhead is quite diverse. Coefficient of variation is the, uh, it imposes the lowest overhead with below 1%. The kolba gliber divergence has about 4.3% uh, overhead, which is mostly due to um, kernel density estimation for the divergence and the relative confidence interval with has just below 11% runtime overhead, so the highest. The coefficient of variation uh, has this low runtime overhead because it's just uh, calculating the standard deviation divided by the mean, and the relative confidence interval with has this high overhead because of how we estimate confidence intervals with bootstrap, which, which is a statistical simulation technique. And considering these overheads, we can have huge uh, time savings um, for all of our stoppage criteria. The relative confidence interval with uh, which uh, produces the most stable results still uh, can give us a 66.2% time saving over the standard uh, JMH uh, execution. And the coefficient of variation saves us the most time with 82%. So yes, dynamic reconfiguration can substantially reduce the runtime despite the overhead of the analysis that it might have. So what have we learned? From our pre-study, we have mostly learned that uh, existing open source benchmark suites have very long runtimes and they often use the default configuration. So these two arguments, having long runtimes and, and often not properly or specifically configuring the benchmarks is an indication that there is a need for a, a data-driven technique like ours. We also showed that static configuration actually wastes precious benchmarking time by warming up the system to, for too long and executing forks that are not necessary. And even though that some of the analyses uh, take uh, up to 11% of overhead, it's still worth doing this analysis to reduce the overall runtime. And finally, which stoppage criteria to choose depends highly on what is the desired benchmark stability. If uh, the goal is to have the, 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 the closest stability to a standard uh, JMH execution and relative confidence interval with is the, the, the go-to criteria. Otherwise, uh, callback library divergence or coefficient of variation might be suitable. We have two research recommendations that, that researchers can pick up on and, and and use our, our approach as a basis for. First, we foresee that uh, combining dynamic reconfiguration with uh, other regression testing techniques might be beneficial to reduce the overall testing time of micro benchmarks. We, we could see combining it with regression test selection or test case prioritization. And the other interesting aspect that we see is automatically selecting the approaches hyperparameters like the minimum number of warm-up iterations forks, the parameters for the stoppage criteria, and the, the sliding window size. To summarize, I showed you the challenges uh, with micro-benchmarking of long execution times uh, and performance variability, which is, uh, which is commonplace in open source software. And it's ultimately a configuration trade-off between the runtime and the stability of benchmarks. I then introduced you to dynamic reconfiguration, uh, which is a data-driven way to stop benchmarks uh, when, they, when they reach a stable state and have overall a stable measurement in order to skip iterations and forks.
we evaluated our approach uh, for 10 open source projects, looking at whether the stability of the result remains the same and we can save time. And we show that uh, dynamic reconfiguration hardly changes the result stability compared to JM how JMH works today. And we can save substantial amount of runtime. With this, uh, I want to point you to, to, to our paper that can be found under the links below here to get more information. And with this, I'm happy that you listened and goodbye.